So we'll continue and they may or may not be able to join us and we'll fill in the gaps as we go. So thank you again and let's begin. I deliberately chose this background because it's called um, Weaving the Threads, Woven Threads. And we're coming together to give thanks and celebrate the many achievements of the past year. And the woven threads that we're trying to bring together are all the different aspects of what we do here at Margaret Beaufort. And we're going to hear from different people celebrating and giving thanks for the many different achievements of the year. And Dominic, I wonder if you wouldn't mind going round to the Stonehill room and inviting them to the Beatrice Jones room, that would be helpful and that might solve the problem. Thank you, Dominic. After each section, we're going to pray that particular refrain, give thanks to the Lord for God is good. God's faithful love lasts forever. So I'm delighted to ask Louise, as our Director of Studies, to tell us some of the great things that we're celebrating this year from the people who've been studying with us. So we are delighted to have a number of students who have completed their studies this year or are near to completing their studies. And we would like to congratulate congratulate the following students from MBIT. So Virginia Graham, who successfully completed her PhD during the pandemic. Emily Westlake, who successfully completed her MA in Theology, Ministry and Mission during the pandemic. Catherine Cruz, who is near completing, who is nearing the completion of her MA in Theology, Mission and Ministry. Um, Liam Woodward, who has successfully completed the Catholic, the, the Catholic Certificate in Religious Studies. Kathleen Das, who has successfully completed the uh, Catholic Certificate in uh, Religious Studies. Jodie O'Hewa, who is nearing the completion of her MA in Ethics. Conchita uh, Gomez Subira, who is nearing the completion of her MA in Spirituality, and who has been our Wardner MBIT during this last year, and will be embarking on the first steps towards a PhD in KU Leuven in Belgium in September. Uh, Mary Stella Ramirez Guerra, who is nearing the completion of her diploma in theology for ministry, um, for, for ministry in the um, in the Cambridge Theological Federation, and has been our deputy warden and social media lead at MBIT. Susan Carlson, who is nearing the completion of her prof doc, Antonia Lynn, who is nearing the completion of her prof doc, and Pavlina Kasparova, who is nearing the completion of her PhD. And we would also like to congratulate Jeanette Milbourne, who has successfully completed the Certificate in Catholic Theology and Practice. And this um, picture here, this image, is uh, part, of the, part of a piece of work, an extra piece of work that she did for that qualification. So um, we're really delighted that even though, the, even though the, that we've had this pandemic, so many of our students have managed to arrive at this point of successful completion or they're about to hand in their work. So I think that's something wonderful that we can really celebrate this year. Thank you, Louise. And so we can say together, give thanks to the Lord for God is good. God's faithful love lasts forever. And Dominic, I turn to you now. We give thanks for Dominic, who's been our acting director of research whilst Ferdia is on research leave. And Dominic's going to share with us some of the many gifts to celebrate from our research community. Thank you, Sue. And indeed, we have very, very many. And I'm going, first of all, to invite Gemma to speak on the gifts of the research in the Religious Life Institute, which she heads up for us. The greatest gift for the Religious Life Institute this year has been the multiplication of research projects, which shows the huge energy that there is and still is in religious life, especially the religious life of women around the world. 
I'm about to leave to go to Rome uh, the day after tomorrow for the first uh, complete live meeting of the network of sisters who are theologians and academics under the age of 60 uh, who are creating a global network of commentators and writers about religious life. We've been putting that global network together for the last two years. I'm having a meeting tonight of the research group that is looking at the experience of women who've entered religious life in the last 20 years from the United States and Canada, Britain, France, um, Australia and Ireland. And I have been part of a four person group that has been redacting the synod response from religious all around the world um, in six different languages that we've been delivering and redacting for the Vatican. It's been an amazing privilege to hear such voices of wisdom and energy and um, immense dedication under sometimes extremely difficult circumstances. And the Synod response has been both male and female right across the world, a wonderful experience of collaboration. Thank you very much, Gemma. And next, and indeed, uh, we were very happy to, to welcome Sister Fidelis um, among our researchers. That was a nice crossover. I'd like to invite Anna now to speak about the achievements of the Centre for Ecclesial Ethics this year. Indeed, it's first year. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes. Okay. So we give thanks and celebrate in the achievements of the Center for Ecclesial Ethics. First of all, the formal launch, uh, launch last December with the lecture by Professor James Keenan from Boston College on the Vulnerable Church the synodal talks that we hosted together with Caffot and Synod Fruits, the symposium two weeks ago on listening and the empirical work that is being done in parishes as they recover from COVID, the conference on liturgy today. And we thank for Liam Hayes, the center's director for his dedication, hard work and creative vision for the future of the center. We also pray for Liam's health and blessings for the future of the center. Thank you very much, Anne. Um, um, I'd like to speak on behalf of the collaboration between the Yuan Dao Study Society of Hong Kong, headed up by Christine Lai and Edmund Kwok and Margaret Beaufort. I organize the Margaret Beaufort end. We've been very blessed by God, really, and by such generous people and in the face of all sorts of odds, um, institutional, um, post-COVID, political. We've been able to expand our seminars this year, involving collaborators from the Asia Academy of Pastoral Theology, Minzu University of China, the Dominican Institution, New Research Institute in Berlin, the Dominican Sisters of St. Joseph, and the University of Basel. And we've looked at the church as bridging cultural and political divides, at integral care and wellness for the aging and for the mentally ill, and especially at faith formation for those with intellectual disabilities, which included a great paper from Sue. As we build up participation in the research seminars, we're looking forward to our 2022-23 program. Um, I've also, one of my responsibilities is to coordinate our research seminars and research conference of our research associates here at Margaret Beaufort and visiting fellows. Uh, again, immensely grateful to God for what has been a difficult year for so many people when we're aware that many of our sister institutions sometimes had to cancel seminars and conferences owing to illness and exhaustion and resource problems. Our people have been able to somehow to keep going. Our seminars have been thriving. We've looked again at spirituality and aging looked at music, transgender, Catholics and the church, religious life today, Sister Fidelis addressed us at our last meeting, and Catholics' relationship with the Old Testament, headed up by Rosalie. And above all, I think we have been so blessed by that unique, and they say unique, Margaret Beaufort combination of nurturing, intellectual rigor, pastoral focus, 
and mutual support. And we are looking forward in hope, prayer, and great gratitude to our annual conference next week. Thank you, Dominic. And so we can say together, give thanks, give to, thanks the to the Lord. Lord. God, God, God is, is good. God's faithful love lasts forever. <clears throat> My particular interest, as you all know, is the pastoral outreach work. And this year it has been a delight. And that's what I'm giving thanks for, because at long last we've been able to work in person in schools. So I've had the pleasure of working with a school in Peterborough. And the feedback that I've um, got back is that this has reconnected them in some small way with their faith and why they want to work in Catholic schools. We very successfully are delivering the diocesan certificate of Catholic studies to a group of nine. And we've con continued our ecumenical and interfaith links across the Cambridge Theological Federation. And this picture comes from the pilgrimage that we had for the Federation a couple of weeks ago for Ascension Thursday. And it was just lovely and wonderful to be able to welcome people back into the garden and have children running around and be with our Cambridge Theological Federation colleagues. And so together we can say, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's faithful love lasts forever. And now turn to Anna. I would like to give thanks for our partner institutions here at Margaret Beaufort, especially for Lynn's House and all their work that they are doing accompanying people with learning disabilities. We also thank God for all the achievements of the Kirby Lang Center for Public Theology and for their collaboration with us. We are grateful for all the work of Margaret Beaufort Association and the president, Suzanne Jennings, who is, um, through her commitment, um, expanding the work of the association and planning fantastic uh, ideas and events for the 30th anniversary of the Institute next year. We also celebrate in particular the publication of a book by one of our um, professional doctorate alumna, um, Phyllis Muraya. I hope her book is, is there. It's entitled Cancelling in Cultural and Spiritual Diversity. Uh, we are really delighted. This is an amazing publication and we, we truly celebrate it and um, congratulate uh, Phyllis on, on this publication. And so together we can definitely say, give thanks to the thanks Lord. Lord, for God is good. God's faithful love yes. forever. Anna, I hope, is going to move her iPad to Claire. Claire Dalton is our chair of our trustees. Thank you, um, Sue, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you clearly. Thank Good. you, Claire. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the work of the trustees throughout the year. It's been a busy year and we've been looking at how we can work together with the council to make the future of the Institute strong and sustainable. Um, and we've been exploring a number of options. We've been very glad to have the feedback from those who received the press release earlier in the year and have come forward with suggestions, but most of all, expressions of support and confidence in the work of the trustees in the council. We have a lot to do. Um, we've got, it'll be a busy year ahead, but we're grateful for, for everyone's support and, and work. And also we're very grateful for the confidence shown the Institute through the donation grant from the canonesses of St. Augustine, who remain closely associated with the Institute and have been a great source of support. Thank you, Claire. So again, we can give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's faithful love lasts Last forever. forever. 
And I'm going to have to ask Anna again to help here, but we have a message from our very own special guru. This is a special member of our community, Beaufort Bo, and this is his um, message to all of us for the summer, slightly lowering the tone of our celebration, but hopefully is equally inspiring for all of us. Uh, and these are his suggestions that we should stay still when we can and contemplate, be curious, um, stretch and relax, aim high and always pray. Thank you, Anna. And we very definitely give thanks to the Lord for God is good. God's faithful love lasts forever. And I'm delighted now to turn to Deacon John, who is at the moment the chair of our council for the final blessing. Almighty Father, you are lavish in bestowing all your gifts and we give you thanks for the favour you have given to us. In your goodness, you have favoured us and kept us safe in the past. We ask that you continue to protect us and to shelter us in the shadow of your wings. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, who has shown you such great mercy, bless you with an everlasting blessing. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.